great honor to read all these stories, and uh, I'm very pleased to introduce you to the uh, winner, uh, a story called uh, Mystic Master Salvador, uh, that uh, achieves sort of the same thing that I think this uh, festival achieves. It's all one piece. Uh, it's a story about magic, the certain kind, uh, and I thought from the minute I read the first sentence that this first sentence uh, knows its last sentence, which is what we always feel when we uh, pick up the whole thing. So congratulations, uh, Tom. It's a great honor to have you here. Great job. That's it. I bought that t-shirt with me in there. <laughs> <laughs> I just wore it today, that would be really fun. <laughs> yeah, we all know Patrick doesn't like giving thanks, so I won't thank him. <laughs> um, but I will give thanks uh, for this extraordinary welcoming festival. We're all grateful to the team for putting it on, and yes, Cork is a lucky city. Alexander McLeod. <laughs> uh, thank you for reading my story, and thank you for picking it. Thank you for your generosity and insights and support and teaching and your words, spoken and written. Talking with you has been a weirdly mystical and soul-shifting experience. So, thank you for that. Uh, again, Cork is lucky to have you for the period you're here. The story. Mystic Master Salvador. That summer at Pickering's, past the Clark shoe stand and next to the Star Wars figures, there were two blokes who did magic. Beard guy and his polished head did disappearing stuff with handkerchiefs. The handkerchief didn't disappear, he shoved them in his secret pockets. And Terry Osborne said once the magic dud escapes and flew round the store shitting on the night dresses till the janitor shooed it out the window. The mums and little kids liked beard guy. They'd ooh and ah and clap their stupid hands every time a handkerchief disappeared. We used to go along and take the piss. My dad said in the Navy, you give it or you get it. It was my full school in two years, so I was the one to give it. It's up his sleeve or it's in his pocket, we can see it. Where's your dove now, Baldy? <laughs> the mums would shake their heads like we told their precious kids Father Christmas was just a dad dressed up. Beard guy would sweat and we'd laugh. And that was the fun. He lasted two weeks. Saturday, we're expecting beard guy, piss taking, locked and loaded. But it's not him. Instead, a tall bloke with a black moustache and a cloak comes through the curtains at the back. He walks forward, a magic gunslinger. He stands on the little stage watching us like he's a king. We're only silent. He looks at us, kind of into us. Suddenly we're all shouting. A black rat has crawled up onto his shoulder. It sits there. He stands there, an eyebrow raised, like it's the most normal thing in the world to have a massive black rat on your shoulder. He lifts a hand for quiet. Meet Hades, he says to us all. Hades, meet the children. Saturdays at Pickering's changed forever. The man was mystic master Salvador and he was a real magician. He gets out a pack of cards and I, get, I nearly get to be the card picker kid but Phil Oakley beats me to it. Phil picks a card and shows it just to us. An eight of diamonds. Phil puts it back in the pack. Mystic master Salvador takes a card from behind Phil's ear. It'll be the eight of diamonds, not bad. He watches us. Then with the eyebrow raised thing, he slowly turns the card around. It's the three of clubs. What's that about? Normally he'd be booed off the stage for messing up the trick. But he has this look of power, so we're silent. 
He puts the three of clubs in Phil's shirt pocket, puts his hand on Phil's shoulder and gives him a you will obey me look. He stands back up on the stage, all black cloak and magic, and tells Phil to, tells Phil to take a look. Phil takes the card out of his pocket, the very same card, but it's not the three of clubs, it's changed back to the eight of diamonds, which Mystic Master Salvador never even saw. He gets a big shout out from us for that one. Next, he gets a kid to do a drawing on his magic notepad. He looks at it, and he, he, sorry, he doesn't look at it, and he knows it's a house or a cat or whatever. He makes the house or the cat vanish off the pad and reappear in someone's pocket or bag. And once from Dan Griff Jenkins' trousers. <laughs> now, that was fun. Things kept appearing in Griff's trousers after that. Golf balls, tennis balls, and once a Barbie doll. He gets so Mystic Master Salvador just looks at Griff's trousers and gets a laugh. We still shout, what's in your trousers, Griff, every time we see him. <laughs> just when you think you know what will happen next, Mystic Master Salvador does the opposite. He knows the thoughts you have and the thoughts you don't know you have. He knows what you want before you do. That is his magic. We love the stuff with Hades. We start the charm. The girls clap and the boys stamp. What do we want? Hades, when do we want him? Now! Mystic Master Salvador raises his hand for silence. Gives us what a teacher looks like we've done something bad. But the eyebrow raise is his sign that we haven't and it's all okay. Two little black eyes appear on Mystic Master Salvador's shoulder and we all cheer like we're six again. He always does the intro. Hades, meet the children. Once he made Hades appear in Alison Parker's duffel bag, she screamed, we loved that. Then he'd throw Hades into the air and Hades would vanish. That was good. But there was a trick he did with Hades that beat the others, hands down. None of us knew how he did it. He had this massive old book of magic spells. He pretended it had all the names and ages of all the children in all the world. He'd fix one of us with his magic eyes then look whoever it was up in his book and tell that kid how old he was. It could have been a guess, but he was spot on every time. Turns out that wasn't the actual trick. You thought it was, but it wasn't. You let Hades run along the pages, then Hades sits still in the middle of a book of names. Mr. Master Salvador stares at us, his giant magic eyes. We are so still. Quicker than you can see, he slams the book shut on poor old Hades. Fur flies up in the air, the girls scream. My gut he kill his own rat just for fun. Even though we've seen it before, we think he's got it wrong and killed Hades. Then we're all laughing and pointing, because there's Hades, little nose and tiny eyes peeping up over Mystic Master Salvador's shoulder again. And the rat climbs up onto his head, us lot cheering as we kiss ourselves. That was his brand finale. Then it wasn't. Turns out all the stuff with cards and drawings and Magic Rats was just for starters, like he was just playing with us. He'd saved the real magic to last. If you dare look straight at him, at his thin face that Marie McGovern says is like Dracula, his eyes grow big as baseballs, and he stares down into your soul. Any mum still left after the rat murder trip freak out and go off and browse the lacy knickers and bras, dragging their little kids with them. Fine by us. Grown-ups have a lot of bad thoughts and none wanted Mystic Master Salvador knowing what was inside theirs. Seeing into their souls, knowing their dirty grown-up secrets. He stares with his laser eyes at, let's say, Brian Johnson. Brian's like, oh, oh not me, but loving it, really. And just as Brian's head is literally about to explode and his brains fly all over the Star Wars stand, Mystic Master Salvador suddenly says, B. We gasp and clap. There's no way Mystic Master Salvador knows Brian's name for this would be because he doesn't know who Brian is. We worked out there's a 1 in 26 chance of getting it right. A bit less because Marie says no one has a name beginning with Z or Rex, at least no one in our town back then. Mystic Master Salvador pretends to look up Brian in his big book of names, but we know Mystic Master Salvador is actually looking into Brian's soul. That's why the mums and dads hate Mystic Master Salvador. This is real magic. Mystic Master Salvador reaches out his hand. The boys who get picked say, you can't stop yourself. Your legs walk for you. In your head, 
You're still standing with your mates in the crowd, but suddenly you're up on the stage. The clothes, the black curtains, you're part of the act. Brian's up on stage. Mystic Master Salvador puts a hand gently onto Brian's head, stroking his hair, getting ready. The boys that get picked see your brain gets hotter. You feel the thoughts screaming out your head, feel your soul emptying like his long fingers are inside you. And that's how Mystic Master Salvador knows your name. He stares into the distance, all mesmerised, sucking the name out of your head. Suddenly, he swings his burning eyes back onto you and clear and loud and for all to hear. He says, Brian! We go mad. How does he do that? He doesn't know Brian. There's no way he can know his actual name. I'd swap my Kevin Keegan Top Trumps card just for that. <laughs> to have that. To be up there. If it did nearly happen once, his eyes swiveled across and stopped on me. Like he was noticing me for the first time. It's me. I stood strong and proud and ready for everything. His single eyebrow raised and he picked Ashley Wilkes instead. I still don't know what I did wrong. I'd stare at him, pushing the first letter of my name at him. I couldn't get picked. It was never me up on that stage. Instead it would be Brian Johnson with the fastest serve of the year, Kevin Baker the head boy, or Keith the teacher's son. Marina never got picked either, but she had black hair and was a girl, so that explained it. <laughs> I even tried pretending not to be interested at all. Standing at the back, playing with a beaten up try before you buy etch a sketch, shaking it again and again and again, and watching the black lines vanish like they were never there. But that made me even more invisible. Some kids never make it to the stage. Mystic Master Salvador sets eyes on them, and a dad yanks them off to look at the fishing rods and reels and the silvery day glow lures and sea hooks. Mystic Master Salvador watches those kids vanish from the toy section and disappear past the clerk's shoe stand. He looks a bit sad because they've spoiled the trip. We watch them go too, waiting for them to explode or get struck by magic lightning. But that never happened. He spared them, I suppose. He didn't seem to mind that the adults had all gone and we liked it because it was just us now. It's weird that none of the grown-ups like Mystic Master Salvador. If they mention him, it's in a grown-up whisper. Maybe he is Dracula, and that's the big secret in town. I heard he did good things. He was on the school board and other charity shit like that. Did the books or kept the notes or something for the golf club or tennis club. I thought how brilliant he'd be at a meeting, because he'd already know what everyone was going to say. Have the notes finished before the meeting started. He thought they'd give him a medal. I'll go off and look at underwear and fishing rods on the Saturday. I wanted to be his assistant, learn his powers. Then I'd know the answers to all the exam questions. Top of the class with Kevin Baker. I'd get my own clothes, stand up there on stage, everyone waiting, watching. I'd pick the new blonde boy in town, the strange boy no one knew, summon him up on stage with my magic eyes, look into his head to see his thoughts. I'd name him, say his name out loud, and everyone would clap and cheer and We'd be up there, me and a new boy, and he wouldn't feel so alone because he'd been named. I'd squeeze his shoulder and he'd know he existed. The best bit, the bit that gives Mr. Master Salvador his credentials for being a major mind bender, is what happens at the very end. We're all clapping and laughing. He makes the boy take a bow, take all the applause, generous. Mr. Master Salvador does his bow just with his head and his eyebrow. He's not interested in anyone clapping his magic genius. And he gives a little smile. The only time he smiles makes him almost human. Then, all of a sudden, Mystic Master Salvador's cloak flies open, like he really is Dracula. The magic cloak engulfs the boy, wrapping him up. And the boy actually disappears, gone. Then, just as quickly, Mystic Master Salvador disappears too, swishing through the black curtains at the back of the stage. Even though this happened every week, <coughs> through the whole summer, we always thought the boy had actually vanished. Shot off into another galaxy or vaporised. There'd be a sad family with an empty place at tea time, beans on toast going cold. A while later, the boy would reappear, looking like the blood had drained out of his body. He'd reappear by the pick and mix counter with a little paper bag of melt in the mouth sherbet flying saucers, all those see through jelly bellies to show. If the mums and dads knew what happened behind the curtain, then they weren't telling. 
That was the magic. No one really knew what they knew and what they didn't know. The boys who disappeared had their minds melted and their brains bleached clean. None of them could remember what happened. I'll never know, because Mystic Master Salvador, he never picked me.